This week on Unfinished Business, we talk about films that have witches in them. Are they evil witches or are they innocent sorcerers? We're not going to get into a whole religious conversation about this, but you know, I just wanted to highlight movies that have them good and bad because I feel like witches are kind of like werewolves. They're like the stepchild of the monster genre because, you know, it's all about zombies and vampires, but you know, and oh, excuse me, and ghosts. But you know, witches, you know, they sometimes are the ones who cause this and create this, but you know, they're treated as supporting characters or really misunderstood because they're used mainly in fairy tales and animation as the go-to villain, but then you'll have a good one. So it's like the good and the bad, I guess. It's sort of like superheroes. You have the superpower, but which way do you go? Do you choose to be, you know, gracious and give people what they want? Or do you go and, you know, use it for your own maybe selfish means? Or maybe they just know the secret that all magic has, you have to pay for it some way, spiritually, emotionally. Like, I can give you what you want. But is it, you sure it's really what you want? Well, you're going to have to pay the price somehow. Now, of course, I can cite the animated film Snow White, uh, The Little Mermaid, where, you know, the, the characters kind of go to the, well, more in The Little Mermaid. She goes to Ursula to ask for this, and Ursula gives her what, her, what she wants, and she wants her prize back. But when she comes and wants it back, now all of a sudden she's the villain because she wants to get paid? Come on, what's up with that? Plus, I mean, not to mention, witches kind of are discriminated against. I mean, they're... Uh, for uh, in most tales they're human and i mean but then we're we're like taught early by these fairy tales that okay we can like the wizards or the good witches which we'll call fairies but you know oh but if they're a witch like in wizard of oz oh they're evil they're like this i mean it wasn't at the point of maleficent it was to show how wrong she was and because she wants justice you know everybody thinks of her as a villain and then she ends up having a heart of gold but I'm just saying you know I feel like we're turned against witches at an early age sometimes because they're like oh you don't want to be a witch you want to be like a nice fairy a princess or all that but I mean lay magic I mean it's a dangerous art not that everybody can get into but so are certain careers but that doesn't stop stop certain people from becoming basketball players you know if you're good at it go for it if you're not you know you find something else to do now of course you have films like the believers and serpent and the rainbow but are they really about witchcraft or are they more about voodoo and you know because you know you see zombies you see the characters affected and people coming back to life zombie like for you zombie junkies out there but in the end you know they all have, these two particular films have witch doctors in the middle of them. Yes, that's right, I said witch doctors, and they're male. But then you have films like, let's say, Labyrinth. Okay, that is, you know, this whole kids film designed about the Goblin King, who happens to know magic, played by David Bowie, and a lot of us are affected by this film. But, in his heart, he is a warlock, because he created this, he can cast spells. All, and it, all, all that is happening is because of a wish, and he granted that wish for a teenage girl he was in love with. Let's not go there about how maybe perverted this could be, but, you know, it's different. Then we have the film The Avengers Age of Ultron, Scarlet Witch, anyone? She even says it in her name. She doesn't cast spells like I over a cauldron, but she has magical powers, which all the characters kind of do in their own mutant abilities. So, I mean, again, another witch. The Kiss with Joanna Pakula, I believe, playing the main character, where basically she comes in and she acts like she's this a woman's aunt and, you know, she like seduces the father and we find out she has like this little gremlin henchman and, you know, it's the first time I've actually seen a horror film that centered really around a character who is a witch and, you know, trying to keep her youth and take over everything this teen girl does. So, again, it kind of plays like a fairy tale because she's trying to seduce the father, take the girl's youth after killing the girl's mother. So, hmm, see, you bet you didn't think about that. I'm not saying it's a great film, but next time you watch it, think about it. The Sorcerer's Apprentice with Nicolas Cage, and strangely enough, this isn't the only film he's in that makes the list. But this one is, you know, he's a modern day Merlin, and you know, he has to go against Alfred Molina's witch, and then he's teaching an apprentice by, played by Jay Baruchel. I mean, this is more of a sci-fi extravaganza, but you can't do any worse. I mean, it's not gonna go into detail, but you know, it's, it's a good film. It's a, it makes the kids happy. If any of you have seen Supergirl, Faye Dunaway, she has that rock from Krypton that she puts in some kind of weird chamber and uses it to cast her spells or get what she wants. And you know, well, let's face it, she's a witch. It's, she's not an evil character. She's not Lex Luthor, like trying to turn everybody against Supergirl. So again, 
But then again, you start wondering with Supergirl, is this what the whole thing of femininity is? Is that, okay, we have this female Superman and the only thing we could think of as a villain was to create some evil character who's a witch and uses, you know, the powers more as spells. But you know, Supergirl, I have a soft spot in my heart for the films. There's The Crucible, which started off as a play and eventually was made into a movie with Winona Ryder and Paul Schofield and Daniel Day-Lewis, which is about the Salem Witch Trials, but it more involves a guy who uh, basically cheated on, he cheated on his wife and because he had lust in his heart and his refusal of the girl, she not only accuses, she uh, admits to being a witch, but she accuses his wife of being a witch. And the whole film is, are these trials and you know, his wife being the only true innocent person in this film. Since we're talking of a more practical witches, uh, there's Practical Magic with uh, Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman, which is seen more as a film to bring those two powerhouse actresses together. This is more in the fantasy realm, but it has a little bit more of realism. It's a romantic comedy. It, this is, uh, I didn't say they were all horror guys. So this one is more, you know, cutesy romantic comedy that happens to have witchcraft in the background based on a bestseller. Witchfinder General with Vincent Price. This one is a horror film, but also more of a thriller about a guy who makes his living, you know, going to towns, starting up, oh no, she's possessed or she's a witch and, you know, uh, making his money by accepting a fee to supposedly get rid of the spirits and these witches and kill these characters. It's a very interesting, it's a more dramatic horror film, but it's pretty good. You know, it's not your typical Vincent Price B movie. Rob Zombie even took his uh, hand at directing a film about witchcraft, Lords of Salem, which it's interesting. I mean, of course it has, you know, his favorite B movie actors and actresses, you know, Bruce Davison, Br Marie Conchita Alonzo, and even has Magenta from Rocky Horror Picture Show as one of the witches. And of course it stars his real life wife, Sherry Moon Zombie, who is having vision as getting haunted. And you know, as the film progresses, we find out she was a witch in a past life and is trying to come out of her and convince her to stay in order to find her destiny as a witch. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting film. It's more of a film that's interesting for its direction than its storyline, but I'll give it. At least Rob Zombie tried something different and original. The Snow White movie starring Sigourney Weaver as the evil witch, Snow White, A Tale of Terror, that was only released on, uh, I believe, on Showtime. And this one has a young Snow White as an impetuous young lady who loses her father to the witch, but she causes the witch who marries her father to have a miscarriage and because of that the witch has this vengeance against her and she's thrown into the woods where she eventually falls in love with a woodsman and of course she falls in with the seven dwarves who are her protector through these woods and the witch's attacks and um, her fiance in the film is seduced by the witch in this one and we even have Sigourney Weaver an old lady a grotesque makeup offering the upper um, it's not that noteworthy. It's sort of like Snow White and the Huntsman, except without as much action, which is another film, Snow White and the Huntsman, which Charlie Theron owns in that film with Chris Hemsworth and Kristen Stewart. Again, it's pretty much the same tale I just described, except more action and more recognizable stars and definitely better special effects. That is why I would say go for Snow White and the Huntsman over that film. Better acting, better effects. And for all of you who are afraid you're gonna get bored, it's not as supernatural, but you get more action in that. There's Hocus Pocus with Ben Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy and Jimmy, more of a kid's film, but you know, I got a weakness for the Bette Midler film, so I thought I'd list it. And again, it's more of a kid's film. There's one of the earliest films about witchcraft, Haxon, which is supposed to be a documentary and supposedly some footage of actual uh, witches or practicing of witchcraft, which is a pretty good film. It's a silent movie. I believe it was made 1923 or 1936, but I say give it a look if you're really into this subject. The kids film, The Witch is directed by Nicholas Roeg. Think about that for a second. But here we have Angelica Houston and it's a, you know, again, it's a children's tale where a boy spies on a, a witch's convention and basically gets turned into a mouth and they all try to kill him. And you know, it's sort of kind of like Labyrinth because they have the human faces, but when they show their real faces, uh, they're like such grotesque, you know, puppet characters. But it is, it's scary for younger kids, but it, if you're an adult, it will get to your child at heart. And since it's pretty much, 
set up like a fairy tale. It's dark, but it is so good. I definitely suggest this film. And there's The Brothers Grimm, directed by Terry Gilliam, which is about, you know, the guys who created those, the Grimm brothers who created those fairy tales. You know, the more dark, macabre before Disney got their hands on them. And, you know, we see through this film where they come up with these tales. And here they're more like kind of buskers, like they'll come into town and say, oh, you guys are haunted by this. We'll get rid of them. And in this tale, they actually come across an actual witch, you know, and they have to combat this witch. It, you know, it's the only film where you'll see Peter Stomar drop kick a cat. Let me put it to you that way. It's one of the better Terry Gilliam modern films. Um, it's not great, but it's good. And it, it's one of the last performances by Heath Ledger also. The Craft about Teenage Witches, which is way better than Teen Witch. Now, some of you might know my history with this film. Like at the time, there weren't a lot of horror films coming out and I went to go see this with my best friend of the time, Jason Plummer, and we went to go see The Craft. And you know, it's like teen girls, you know, they, they create their own coven and it's modern day. They all wish for something. They all gain confidence and become popular through this. When we watch this film, there's a scene, a nightmare sequence, where this house is all filled with, uh, what is it, uh, reptiles of all sorts, snakes, you know, frogs, lizards, and all that. And you know, we're sitting there like laughing at this film, but people in the audience are actually thinking this is scary. That was a sad state of affairs of the theatrical horror film at the time. And everybody's like, ooh, even guys were, and they weren't kidding. And I was just like, are you kidding me? You know, I wasn't a horror connoisseur at this point, but even I was like, this is not that scary. But I mean, it's a good film and I still like it to this day. I saw it in theaters twice. And those are just the ones that I could think of off the top of my head. Feel free to write in or comment about any other films that I might've forgotten that involve witchcraft it is, you know. It's a tangled weave. And yes, I know Wizard of Oz, okay? I mentioned that one. And The Wiz, the black version of The Wizard of Oz. So unfortunately, that ends our business for this week. But remember, out there, there's always unfinished business to be done and to be told. So I have to leave you guys now. But before I do, I have to ask, have you seen Turbo Kid? If not, why not? Because it's awesome. Bye. I better smell on you.